Thank you. Thank you for coming uh, early. Good morning. So, the lecture three. So, let, let me start by a recap of what we did uh, yesterday until now. So, the, the starting point here is that uh, uh, you have F uh, from uh, one to uh, one irrational bumper. Okay, of degree of these two. So here we prove that there exists a unique uh, uh, measure of new, uh, such that uh, uh, let's say in this way, uh, for every alpha, uh, a true form is meant. <coughs> you have that f and star at the end of alpha. Converge to mu and then and then go to mu. Okay, and mu satisfies a uh, uh, mu satisfies f star of mu is equal to the mu. And actually, but we gave a proof of this, but we also gave uh, uh, the idea of a method to prove uh, by duality that f and star g over the n. Converge to CG, which is the integral of G against mu. Okay, this is just uh, this is essentially by one. By yeah, it's uh, G of, uh, let's say, uh, suitable continuous function. Now, this is true for all continuous functions. But the point of the suitable for continuous function is that uh, for suitable continuous function, we can quantify it. The convergence here. We can explicitly say in terms of the speed or the uh, find the norm for which this convergence becomes a contraction outside an environment. How did we do this? So the, the main idea here was to say that uh, was to notice that if I take f and star g divided by n, by the n, let's say if, uh, if g is not, so my f star of n in this case without a pi, this is the transfer operator, yes. And D, we already know that, that is the yes, yes, yes. I mean the lambda in this case, we already know what it is. So in this case, this is a case of transfer operator without weight. How did we do? We prove that in the case of G smooth, we know that all this term for every n, if we take the DDC of this term here in the measure, you take uh, let's say positive plus negative part, plus. This is less than up to a constant f and star of omega over d. This was the Fubini to the form, which is the analog of the Lebesgue form in, uh, in P1, okay? which is characterized by being invariant by the two points. So, in particular, this means that for all n, DDC of f and star g of dn is less up to a constant. We can put the series of all, and this is one over the n, f and star of omega. Okay, let me maybe write m here to avoid the double n. Okay, now this one is a measure, positive measure on P1. Okay, and we say that, okay. If uh, we have we have a lemma, that but first of all we know that uh, if uh, let's say mu uh, is a positive measure on P one probability measure, let's say is a probability measure. Probability, yeah. Uh, sorry, this could just so omega is the measure. Omega is the Fubini study. Mm -hmm. Lebesgue is the Lebesgue. The point is that you can take this, you can take uh, some other smooth, but the point here, you, you, you take the back one. It's so the absolute of the left hand side is a, the, is a measure. 
So this, uh, this, so yeah, this is the function. So this is the true form. The true form in this case is the measure. It has a positive and a negative part. This is, if, if you write this as plus minus minus, this means the mark of plus plus minus. So the, 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 the total mass of the two parts. Right. Suppose if it is the difference of two deltas, this one, this one is delta plus delta. I mean, this one is, sorry, that's not going to put the mass. This one is as a measure. Okay, this is a measure. I just say formally the, the absolute value of this one is new plus plus new minus. In this way, I can compare as measure. Right. Not because every time I state it, comparison, I always state it for positive measure. And this is just technical. I could just add the positive and negative parts, which has moved. But to be clear, this one is uh, is the correct way to write. Right. And you have F star. What was it then you, then you have uh, F star, the star is not the so this was the method that I said with cohomology. Now we all we never put we always put forward. But the idea here is that since you have two levels of cohomology, if you want to push forward, uh, so in cohomology, if you want, if I have a U a function a component with F, you can imagine that the action in the uh, norm infinity or norm L2, for example, is, is preserved. So you have the norm is one. Uh, if uh, if I have alpha, which is a true form, a measure, if I take this, uh, now the class of this uh, is d power alpha. Okay, so there is a, a gap between the, the, the action on f, f star pullback, on, on, these two, on these two levels. We use this uh, in, in the first proof, because when we pull back this, uh, we transfer this to the potential to use that, 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 that you have one d less in the action, so we save the d. Here we are doing the d one. We take functions, but the point is that the DDC helps us. Okay, we start with the function for which we have this radius that we can use. And now, by duality, F star has, in some, in some sense, sent constant to D for functions, and F star sent probability measure to probability measure. Mm -hmm. So this is the dual operator. Now, the action is D times here and one here, okay? Because it's the dual. It's one, 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 and D and D. Now here we do we have the dual. We study function, but using the fact that if we do a DDC, we become a measure, it becomes a measure. And now the action is one. I mean probability goes to probability. So we can save this factor dn for the method. Okay. So again, so we get this one. And uh, if nu is a probability measure on p1, we, we say that we can decompose this as omega plus DDC. Of u that depends on uh, on our probability measure. Okay, we say that this is the potential because every two probability measure in cohomology the difference is zero. So this one is exact, and you have this potential. Now here is a bit more practical to say that mu is mu plus uh, DDC of uh, let's say u prime of, of this one is the same because I can also decompose the I can use the fact that mu is this plus DDC of the green. Okay, just by taking a difference, this one simplified, and I can write this uh, as this plus something else. Why I do this? Because now it's a bit more practical. Because if I want to pull, push forward something, and in particular, we are using this for omega. If I want to, to if I have now to study fn star of mu, now this is fn star of mu, mu fn star, it is your mu. Okay, this for every mu. Now, this one is invariant. So we get that if we want to study the put forward on measures, okay, this one is fixed. And if you want to study regularity, you don't, you don't really care. Plus Fn plus DDC of Fn star of units. Okay, so written in this way, if you push forward or you pull back measures, you move the action or this on the potential. Which a priori was not true here because you also have to, to use the action here on omega. Okay. It's a way to say if I want to study the push forward of a, of a measure, I can move all the problem to the potential. And here I know that I will gain a factor D in the action. Okay. Now, here what I do this is the same. This one, then I know that it is, if I write omega as mu minus DDC of uh, the green, for example. This one will become omega, a uh, omega mu, uh, let's say minus DDC 
of fm star of the grid. Okay, I can move all the problem here. Okay, now the point here we say we 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 have the general criterion that says that if uh, I have two functions and DVC the DVC of uh, let's say u one is less than DVC of u two. Okay, suppose that they are positive. Let's just make it simple. And I have a bound here on some norm. Let's say on the oscillation of this function ensemble. This gives a bound on the oscillation also here. We say that if the u two is co is continuous, one if one is continuous, if this is older, this is older. So here, the idea is we don't have to study the oscillation of this function that we want to go to zero. We can study the oscillation of the potential here. And the oscillation of the potential here, since this one is fixed, it doesn't change and it's older. We want to study the oscillation of the series here. So all this goes down to say we need to study the series of uh, Fm star over Dm of the green function. Okay. Already here, notice something that if I had taken any g, okay. Here I could say that G, DDC G is less than the norm G C2 times omega. And then everything that becomes omega. So this proof already says that the result will be independent on G once you fix the norm C2, for example. Okay. Because G has disappeared here in the method now. I just put here something that depends uh, on the norm G C2. Of course, by linearity, but the rest is disappear in the same way that in the first proof we did, we could make alpha disappear. Okay, so this is already something that it's saying we have hoped to prove that then this is true for all points when we pull back. Now, this is where, where we went, went yesterday. Okay, we want to study this one, and what I what we claim is that G is older for some uh, gamma. Okay. And uh, the point is that uh, here, mm. so what, what is this? This, uh, in general, is an operator that multiplies by D, OK? In, uh, if you have constant, this one multiplies by D. But you divide by D. So constant are fixed by this one, OK? Now, what one can prove here is that uh, F M star of G, of the green mass. This is usually the disagreement. Eh? I'm not saying it's uh, in general. In order infinity is uh, asymptotically, right, let's say for every A larger than one, okay? This, norm, this number here, that a priori to grow like, uh, uh, let me just say that the integral of this will be new is zero, okay? I can just fix the, the constant. If I pick the constant A, this one grows less than A power A. What I'm saying here is that uh, if I take any function, okay, the expectancy is that uh, it should not grow more than D power N. Okay, if I take a, a constant one, it grows D power N. If I have a function whose integral is zero, I expect that it goes to zero, but at which rate it goes the oscillation. This means that for every A close that I want to one, this one diverges, is essentially bounded, let's say. This one is essentially bounded, okay? So it means that, so this uses, I will not prove it here because it's quite deep, but this uses the speed that I said in the theorem, in the previous theorem that I didn't, that I didn't prove. Uses the speed of convergence, let's say of Fm star over Dn delta against me. Against, for example, C2 tests. Because if you want, once you have the convergence here in speed, in particular, it says in norm infinity what's happening because you control for all A. And this is the bound here. But this is a bit delicate. I don't want to enter in this, uh, in this here. But it's something, uh, this is a theorem coming from the, the previous one. But the point is that don't try to prove this by hand because it's, it's, not, uh, it's not clear, not, it's not immediate a priori. Yes. So you have the norm of F star of each power, which iterates you have. Ah, sorry, M. Let's say, yes. Oh, M. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, because I use the N fix. Uh, yes. So for all, uh, 
it means that this one is independent on m okay this function here that a priori you could expect it grows no more than the n okay actually it's essentially bounded okay and this uses the fact that this, this convergence here is uh, asymptotically fast we will use something again geometrically uh, exponentially yes 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 we use this one to get this one and if you remember here i say that this speed here was almost one over the n if you remember but a bit less this is the bit less that you can i mean because if you want if i divide by the n this was the one over delta that, that i said in the equidistribution actually in the speed okay so once in the other theorem that then prove you have the speed this gives the point this comes from the speed now, another, uh, so this one says that, for example, all the terms starting from some big N, if I want, when I'm going to estimate the oscillation of this series, I can say that they are just small. Because once I divide by dm, you can believe that in practice, the tail of this series will not be important, okay? Now, let me say, how can I estimate the big part of the series? So up to some finite number, for example, that will depend on, uh, on the rate, at, uh, at the scale at which we are estimating the normal. In order to do this, we want to say the following. Yes. Uh, so in the formula, you just erase uh, the point You can just one uh, uh, one term, right? And the observation is still that summation. Yes, because it's true actually one against one, but the point is that I am able to find something which is uniform for all n in order then to apply the, the criterion that if DDC of GN is less than DDC of H, then I have something uniform for all the GN. I see. So in order to have something uniform, I need to put the same thing on the right. And thanks to the geometric convergence here, I can put all of them together. Here seems a bit an overkill, but when I will put phi, we, we don't have the, all, all the term will always be there for all n already. So it's uh, so it, it here seems a bit an overkill of putting all of them. Maybe I, I could not to not be necessary, but first it shows quite clearly why the norm is done by the series. Yes. And then with the one when we put five, you have other terms and you cannot only take one term. But yes, it's a good point. A priori here I will not need the series. But you know, so obvious, yes. So if you all you need is that this be some of them. You don't need geometry, right? I need, yes, I, a priori I need summable, but then I also need to be able to control here the regularity. And here, since in any case things diverge a bit exponentially, I need the in exponential to kill this one. So if it was just summable here, the norm infinity of the term maybe is not going to zero. So you see, I, I need something that at least kills me this exponential here. I mean, it can be as, as weak as possible in this case, okay? And I can already tell you that the condition that I said on phi, maximum minus minimum of phi, less than log d, is precisely because it cannot be too strong with respect to this dn. This will, this will be the reason of the condition maximum minus minimum of phi. It's the maximum allowed by the fact that the maximum loss we can have in, in our estimates is with this factor of d over n. This is our margin of error. If more than this, uh, the method cannot work. Okay, so the second point here is that the green function, so we want to say, okay, the G is gamma holder. So it's not that G is gamma holder, is that computation that, that we skipped the formula? Yeah, we didn't do, we didn't do, we didn't do. We didn't do. I prefer to finish the method, likely it will be recorded on Monday. <laughs> it's, I, mean, I prefer to finish the method for, uh, but yeah, we will. It, it's something in the list too. So G is, G is older. Now, the point is, what is uh, Fn star of G? Is it older or is it uh, something? Now, the point is this one. Uh, this is uh, gamma, no, let's say for every tail larger than one. Okay, maybe asymptotically, maybe starting from some M, but essentially is for every k larger than m, larger than one, this is gamma over k over m holder. With the same constant. So I have this lost. Imagine, for example, don't care about one here for now. Take two, for example, and suppose that I have a quadratic polynomial, okay? The idea is that every iteration at worst, I'm losing half of the older regularity. 
because at the critical point, I, I, I have a one. This is the worst I can get at the point. The point here is that for every K, actually, I can get as close as possible to the fifth gamma. This, again, is essentially a consequence of this distribution that if I start doing now, I will not finish the, the matrix here, so maybe I'll, it will be the technical part at the end. But the idea here is the following, is that if you have a point, X, which also explains a bit the other one, suppose that I take uh, X and Y, okay? Two points. If I want to estimate the older regularity of, uh, of a function, of this one, I have to say what is the difference of Y on these two points, okay? Now, it comes from the distribution that I can decompose the pre-images of X and the pre-images of Y, Pairs. So x1, x2, x3, and y1, y2, y3, y4, with the property that the distance between xi and yi is at least the distance x, y. Uh, Let's say that this is now a, this is the pre image for uh, Fn, Fm, okay, and this is something very good. This is uh, uh, one over Km. Now, explaining this is essentially giving the proof of the speed of convergence against all the all the all the tests. So it's 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 something that was already known by Tinsibon is ten years, but this is really the thing, okay. Uh, maybe it's more than that. Yes, it's more than that. Yeah, so I mean, if it was a bit the system, it would be like smaller than this over a constant, really contraction. Here, it's not hyperbolic. Actually, maybe it can become what it can expand because if, if you imagine here, to, to know and to remember this, just take this example. Okay, z goes to the square, i is zero, goes to zero. Take a point close, two points close to zero. You go, what, what is the pre image? They go more far, and the rate is that you are losing the power of two, over two. Okay? This is says that asymptotically for Fm, this is what happens. And in average, for every rate that you take, you can go less than this. So essentially keeping almost putting one here. Okay? Once you can do this, this means that you did one. I will not take too much about the constant, it's not important, but this one is this order. Okay. You said that there's a, a, a human body there, or yeah, there's a body. Not at all. Why not? Ah, wait, wait, wait. Let me just think. Uh, one second. It's maybe easy in dimension one since I'm talking dimension one now, but I'm not. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, in dimension one, it's even better than yeah. We have met now. How often you need the critical set? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay, right. Let me say this. In dimension one, there are even better estimates than this. When you move to higher dimension, this problem of going close to the critical point becomes critically, critically per surface. There you use Lovaloyazievic inequalities to estimate if it's. Yes, yes. Sorry, I pronounced very badly. <laughs> I should have prepared this name. And uh, the idea is that if you have an in higher dimension analytic set, you can estimate. Suppose that you have uh, an analytic set given by h equal to zero, okay? You can ask, uh, what is the epsilon neighborhood of this? Okay, the tubes this, or what is the set of points where h is less than, you know, this tube? I mean, let's say uh, eta. So you see, it's one of the two is, uh, is clear that up to choosing well the one a function of the other, one is too than the other. I mean, if one of the, if you are sufficiently close, then this one is, is, is smaller. But the other is not clear. And the point is that uh, this, one of, this one is included in this one up to taking the power alpha. This is a, this is a quite delicate uh, delicate estimate. Or I mean, I mean it's maybe the other one. Or in higher element. Wouldn't you have better estimates? Of this one? Yes. Likely, yes. The point, I cannot control a bit more here, but we don't need it here. It's, uh, it can be improved. It's, uh, Yes, it'd be too possible, but if you take any dimension, this is the best I know. That essentially it means that if you want from an analytic set, if you want to compare the distance from the analytic set or the value of the function defined in the analytic set, which is a holomorphic function uh, being zero there, okay, 
one of the, the two are essentially the same up to pointing an exponent. Okay, it's just an older uh, and this older thing because here what you do is to check how close you became to the critical set going backward. So if you estimate this uh, going back, going back, uh, this essentially amounts to, to the thing surface. And this is the loss here. This says thanks to dynamics, you can take all these constants, blah, blah, as close as possible to the optimal. So this is a, this is a tool that I don't want to enter here. But in now we have a, a series of all the functions, okay? Each one, so now we have a series. Okay, yes. So in general, for each kind of uh, function of G, this would be... Older, this is true for the older. For the older. I mean, the point is this is not even true for the, this, this is the point. Once you have this, this works very well to estimate older up to a loss uh, of this in the, in, in, the, in the regularity. You can already see that if I take log p continuous regularity, I, this doesn't go in the exponent, but goes in the constant. And so it, it allows to estimate the same number. But this is just the uh, point, it's not normal. Sorry, I uh, going from thinking you know, obvious to think it was fantastic. So this is true for every kappa. Not the other one. Then I say it asymptotically for and that's for n for n larger than larger than number depending on kappa. So this is true. This for uh, m larger than some m depending on kappa. But then the point is that once you fix kappa, you have this finite number. And for the first number, you can just say, you can use the, this, the degree. The worst possible case is the degree. So on the first finite, you use the worst possible, the degree. But in any case, you will not care about the first finite number of a series because, okay, it's a older function, worst case. I, I, I did this. You just need a, what happens asymptotically, okay? So the first part, you don't care. You just take this. But when the, the estimate starts working, you use this one, which is much better. Okay, and now we see, okay, now we have a series of functions which is older. So what, what do we have now? We have a series of, uh, let, let me say in general, we have a series of functions UN, okay, like this. And we know that, uh, uh, let's say UN over GN, no, let me say like this. UN, because here it's clear. And what we know is that UN, which are these FM, G over DM, okay? This one is UN, sorry, UN, UM, C, gamma over kappa M is less than one, the same constant for all, but the point is that the estimate is, becomes bad here. And um in norm infinity is uh, less than, uh, let's say, I don't know, beta m or some beta less than, which is essentially one over d up, up to the loss. Uh, this one, okay. This is what I have. I have a series of all their functions which are worse and worse, and uh, but geometrically go to zero. Now, what is now, in this general setting, if I take now the other one thing that we wanted to prove, in that case, we had a series of C2 functions with the C2 norm diverging, but it was even the same C2. And this one was the same. So in some sense, now, this is a more difficult one than, than the previous one. If you can do this, uh, you can believe me that the, the previous case done with smooth function, it was even simpler than this one. So it's less, uh, but it's the same idea. So let me do this one, okay? Let me see why this one is locked continuous. Claim. For every p, let's say u, u is a, so normal u log p is less than one. This means it is a constant, okay? It's bound. Can you remind me of the normal p is again? Sure. If the function is log p, so normal. Mm -hmm. Let's say this. Let's say that c, g is log p continuous. If the oscillation of G P is a power? P is uh, between one and infinity. When you write log P. It's a power. Yes, 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 yes. Log power. So this one, the oscillation is, is bounded by the norm log P. 
okay, over one plus log of R. However, this is just because uh, to take care of the fact that R becomes big and the other way. It, it, forget this if you don't want, just because it is a singularity. Just like this, with R very small, this one. Log is to the power P. Yeah, I mean, in the same way that all that is this time set gamma, and this, go, go, this goes to zero, this one is going to infinity, so this is going to zero, you take it this, yes. and this is the strength at it which is going to zero. So as P is larger, it's more and more regular. If something is log P continuous for all P, in some sense, it's almost older, but it's not older. I mean, it's, uh, it's in my mind, it's close as possible. As we said by interpolation, it means that it's not approximable by situ function by polyno in a polynomial way, but by super exponential way. This we will go back to this point later. But this is this is the, the definition, okay? So we want to yeah. This, uh, so what's the definition of norm uh, log p? Ah, is, uh, but if uh, but the norm is uh, is the soup on all ball, on all points and all balls of reduce up to error of the oscillation times this one. Mm -hmm. It's, it's this one. This is what I wrote yesterday. That I wrote the other way to have both. But the norm is this if it is bounded, it's the soup on all points on error of the oscillation times this one. In the same way that the older norm is the soup on points and balls of the oscillation divided by R, R gamma. Okay, now let's let us try to do this one, which is a, the general statement of why a series of older functions that become less and less older. On the other hand, it is log p if we have the estimate on, on the tail. Uh, let's try this. There is this, it's here. Then. So, if I want to estimate mem u error, I mean, I fix error. I want to bound the oscillation of u on a ball of radius r. I fix a point, okay, on a ball of radius r by something like this. I mean, this is up to something which is uh, of this order here, okay? I want to get that this is bounded by something like this one by a constant and then we can be, be, be it's bounded. How do we do it? But this is less. Let me use one, one second. Let me do the same notation. Uh, just write the same notation here. Oh, sorry. Here, the point is that I can keep. Uh, Bm. Let me let me change a bit how we are it. It's this one. Okay. And now with this notation. So if you want this one is the F and green over Bm already. Okay. Because with this notation, this is true. Okay. This is one. If we have a function like this, so this one is bounded in older, okay? Okay, so which means that uh, M, uh, uh, so I have another UM here. Yeah. This is less than one. Okay. Whatever. Let, let me write in this The oscillation of B minus N F and star of the green. Let's look at the green. A trait error. Okay. This is less than a constant. Error power gamma K minus M. Okay. This is what we want. Okay. This is this is what was should come from from the estimate there. Now, what does it mean is that if I have the oscillation of now only f m star of the green at rate at the rate r, this is less than the constant b power m 
M, R, gamma, T minus N. Okay, so this is what the uh, mean is. Now, So the oscillation of this, I can say that it is less than the oscillation n unto n of Bm, the oscillation of nu m. So this is f n star dream r plus the sum m at least m of what? Here I put a. Because the oscillation on a ball of reduced R, okay, this comes from, from the fact that it is the oscillation of each term, okay, is one of the terms, plus uh, starting from some M, I just put the number infinity, I just put the oscillation. I don't care. I know that the average is zero, but the oscillation at most is this one, is the number infinity. Okay. Now, how do we estimate this one? Yes. Which one? Which one? You, the big view here was the general rule to prove. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, if you want here, yeah, take another one. Take uh, yes, 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 yes. It's fine. No, I, I will go for the green. The state. About yes. some general view, there's no green function or push forward of anything. Acquired a beta to the heaven front. I'm sure. No, because here I have put the D here. Yes, but the lemma is just okay. the lemma. Ah. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. I see. Uh, no, let, let me use this one. Let me use the green function. This one. This, this. Then I can I do another one for uh, log P. No, but uh, sorry. So this, are you seeing? True. True. Sure. Sure. Yes. You seem to be to be proving something that just helps for you know function satisfying some inner <laughs> parties. And then you went back to doing some green function, you know, push forward and all that. And I I, I just thought you're going to do something that you want to get in first. I will do I will do only for green functions, but the point is that by method as before, like uh, if you take one smooth, uh, first you do a, a cohomology, you you remove you go always to the to the to the green measure and then uh, up to an error is the same. So you can do just for the green functions is the point. By a similar argument as before. Yes, 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 yes. The point is that you can do for log p. I mean this uh... so we have a series such that uh... Uh, 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 for the, so for the older let, uh, let me think for the older I'm not sure. For the older, for the version, a series of log p. Yes, this is true for all functions. But it's, yes, so if uh, the one for the older, I have to think if it's true for all functions. I now I cannot say. So if you here you put this one, the one with the green. Okay, so now what, now I'm just studying this one. One out over dm. F and star omega. Okay, omega I write as mu minus DTC of the green. Okay, now I just use the green function for now. Okay, because the one for the older, like, like this, I guess it's true for all older, but it's, uh, I cannot guarantee. The point is that. You have to multiply by the beta to the end there or what? Because you said that the more infinity was less than beta to the end, which in beta less than one. So that seems yeah, yes, yes, yes. So the point is that I lost the entity. So it's uh, um, no, but it's, this is more general actually. This beta was the, the one of the one of the end, for example, for example, which is one a bit less. Uh, this um, so since I put it later, is this one. So take this one, sorry, to be f m star of the green. And then fix a beta. The point beta is something a bit uh, worse than uh, one over the n. In order to have that, I still have this estimate here. If you remember this one, I have something like a over d. 
So take this as beta, and it's the one that I can put there. It's, uh, I mean, take one over the n, okay? Take one over the n. Because, uh, take one over the n. Now, here, so, uh, green, so let us do just for green. This part here, where do I count? So this one is less than, but, uh, let's say the worst two terms. So let me take N, which is, uh, so remember that we fix R, okay? We fix R, which is the one that, that you are using there. Now, choose, uh, I choose B, which is the one that I want to estimate here, the norm. And I choose K, rather than one, so that Q, uh, Q log K is less than log, a beta a i was the last m b what is q who q is p i'm trying to all the notation everyone is sorry 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 so this is p okay for every p this is fixed is the rate that i have mm -hmm. that, that this is a bit of loss this is essentially one of them this is yeah. one of them this is the loss i have the, the rate i can get i fix p i take k very close to one such that i have this condition here Okay, so it means I make the estimate on the whole, they're very precise, depending on how much I want to get the regularity at the end. Now, with this M here, this term here, this is asymptotically less than AB power M, which is E M log AB, A beta, which is less than E minus M N, B log kappa, because now I can replace this part here with, the, with this term here. And this, this is a minus, because this one is one of the is, is essential. This, is, this modulus means there is a minus here, because it's a negative. So I replace this one. And this becomes uh, what? The, uh, instead of the Okay. Sorry, M. This is M. I put the log here. The log, I yes, I use this one. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, yes, sorry, let me find the M. So log of log R over 2 log K. Right. So this is the cut that I choose. Okay. Now, if I take this M here, Let's M, P, or M, and then M, yes, M is N, yes, sorry. There's no N. There's a two, there's a two. Two, M, P, block K, is this one. Okay, is it believer? Okay, now this one, I, I replace the M, which simplifies the two log K, okay? And now the log, log R becomes the log here, log R. Water with power minus p. So if I can cut at this end here, the tail has, has become something that up to a constant is this one, which means the tail is okay for the normal of p. Okay? And this was done for every p. I choose the k sufficiently good such that the tail is good for this. Okay? Now what we have to check, we have to check that the first part still we, we can bound with respect to log p. Okay? Now, what do we have to do? Well, the first part is the series m less than m. Uh, so beta p power m to check vector r gamma k minus n. Okay, so this one we know the estimate here. Okay, the oscillation here, we say that it's bounded by this. We have this dm, which is bad, okay? And we have this process. Now, 
this one is bounded by, but I can take the worst one of them. In any case, uh, it's a, uh, so this is less than D M R gamma A minus N. Okay. And then, I mean, I just think of this, I just estimate the, the worst of them. In the worst case, it's a linear number. It's not that a linear constant, I think, it creates problems. So it's, this one is what I just guess, okay? Now. Down, no? Down? It's here. K minus, sorry, K minus, uh, K M, yes, sorry. This is num, sorry. K M, yes, 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 correct. So even it's worse and worse, okay? So I have this one, it's diverging DM, actually. But what is this one? Okay? Now, what is this? The only thing I can do here is to replace uh, everything. I put everything in logarithm. So it's E log D over 2 log K. I use this one. 2 log K. Log log R. Yeah, I replace this one. I got the first part. And this one is what? It's E gamma log R. E minus one over two log log. So where did the K go? Uh, here. Thanks to the fact that uh, oh, oh. here I write K power and what is K power I'm using these terms here. So I have an estimate like this. Now the point is that if you simplify the terms, this one, what it is? It's that I have E, I have this log log R, I have this log R here, but it, there is this exponential term here. This is, if you, if you put again the, the good base, it is log R power log D over to log K. So here I swapped, okay? I started with a D, I put log R down and I put here the log D in practice. But the point is that this is divided by E, how I use this one, gamma square root of log R. Correct? But, no, no, if you write it, 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 it's equal. I mean, it's e power gamma. And if I write this part here, this part here, what is, is essentially a log R with the power of one over two. One man over two, which simplifies it one. And so it says a square root of, this is log R, but this is log R with the square root, with the money. And so it becomes a square root. Now, whatever power I have here, here now I have an exponential of the power of log R. So this one is asymptotically smaller than the log R with the power that I want because this one is weaker than this, okay? Okay, now. So you can pick freedom best uh, choosing what is two, right? Instead of two, you can put any same the greatest than one? Yes, 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 it's not very precise with the constants. Yeah. Yes, 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 it's not. It's not very pre with the optimal constant because here we have a lot of margin. Mm -hmm. I mean, in any case, we knew already that thanks to this one, uh, this term, uh, the point was to control in some way the second one, because the first one, it, we, we, we expected something like this that will kill you. Now, the comment I wanted to say is that uh, now we did a series of, let's say, one holder functions. I have to think if it's for the other holder. And we found that uh, the limit is locked before all this. Lock this. Now, what we will use for general C is that if instead of this, I start with the one log P function, if I take fix a P, I take a log P function, it is for a general function now. This is why I say I expect the other one to, to for all the but Here we just use this one. If I take a log P, this, this similar method, just has to be more precise in the second part. If I have a series of uh, alpha, to make a break there at some point. Yes, okay, in one sentence, in one sentence. Here it's a, a series geometrical of F and star of this order function, okay? If here I take U, which is log P, continue, okay? The point is that this one is log U 
continues for some uh, few that depends on p, uh, alpha, d, blah, blah, of all the possible constants that you have. But the point is that here, if you start with all there, you get all the p you want. Because the idea is that this one, it's uh, the, the older, it's enough, even if it's the worst one, to be very strong here in the denominator. Now, suppose that I'm doing the same estimate, but I use here log p, and I have something similar of this estimate that we have, we have to check why, why it's true. But the point is that you still do something like this. You still estimate the tail for some explicit log q, but this one, you can still get the log q. Okay, you, you, you can get a Q explicit less than P, such that if you start with a function which is log P, the series geometric in this way converges, okay, and it's log Q continues with the Q explicit less than P. This will be used later. I, I, I will do it later. And this was a smaller. Yes, of course, smaller than P. There is a loss. Yes, yes, yes. Because okay. each of them, each, each of them, the idea here is that I have one log P. I lose control little by little, but they will be this time in the same log P because of the same estimate. Instead of, if you start, we will do it, but if you try to estimate the, the regularity by this loss, in the older normal, you lost, you lost the, the exponent. But if you are doing something which is exponentially less the log P, you don't lose the exponent, you lose the constant. So in the case of log P function, every term is log P for, every, for the same P, but the constant is becoming worse and worse. You have more control on the constant, but it's much better. And now with the same trick, you decompose the series in two parts and you find an explicit Q less than P for which a series, if you start with log P, is bounded in log Q. Okay, this, this is what I was, I, was, uh, I was thinking of doing, but since you want the older, I the older. It's, uh, but okay, so this is uh, because it, for to do phi equal zero, it's enough this for the older and for the green. For the general one, we will see that we will need uh, for, for general uh, the, the one for log P. So let's make the pose. And then we try to start with five different from zero. I hope at least you are convinced for five plus zero now. That's uh, it's the this is the this one of the point. Okay. So uh just miss out a comment. I mean I didn't understand a question before. So yes, if here you have a series like these geometrical older functions, any older function, okay. Here, the proof work you just start from here, okay? If you have, what does it mean? If you have a series of older functions with this estimate, this, the function satisfies this estimate, okay? And uh, then they go to zero geometrically, then this proof applies, okay? Once you start, you start from here, you just cut in two and you go. I didn't understand the question before, I thought it was another one. So uh, I have a choice now. I can. Uh, I say that this one, okay, if you want to do starting with something which is log p, okay, here, which means uh, the put forward of a function which is log p, okay, you can estimate the series in norm log q with some explicit q less than p. In order to do this, uh, you have to prove something like this uh, in the, for long log p. Now, this uh, you can believe it. As I said, it comes from this one. No? And the effect, it's even better than with older. This one becomes a constant instead of the number. The problem is this one. This one, as I said, comes from the speed of equidistribution of play images, okay? which is true for all the functions, okay? because you can prove it for C2, and you do some interpolation, you get for older. So in that point, it's not clear why you have something like this for log function. It's too weak to apply interpolation theory a priori. Okay, so now we have two choices, or I start with five different from zero, or uh, since you are doing this, uh, I tell you how more or less to get this one for log P, and then, uh, so you know how to get the series for log P plus log Q. I don't know what you do now, then the one is Monday, so it's uh, the two leaves this week can choose me. <laughs> Hello, what's the... Uh... I, I don't back them. Just learning things, sorry. Okay. Both adults, uh, you said you can, uh, I mean, I can uh, or uh, start with five different from zero, and when it will be the point, uh, I will tell you why this machine can work with log p, in particular, how to get this, which doesn't come from the speed of distribution in, uh, in the theorem, because you cannot get by interpolation something on log p, it's too weak. So this has to be proven. I said this machine works to do a series of log p will give log, log q, 
But in order to get this one, you get something more than the speed of equidistribution of the, of the theorem one, okay? Because it doesn't come from interpolation. This one is it's fine, but this one not. So this is something. At some point, we have to do this. Or I start with phi different from zero. And you will see when it's needed, when I have to do this. Sorry? Phi different from zero. Is the meter. Maybe just that make more sense to keep phi different from zero next time with all the estimates done. So let me at least give the idea here of the of this one. I will not say it's simpler, but it's more self-contained, maybe. So I don't have to, to cut the phi different from zero. So Suppose now that you have these, huh? Richard, it's for the mortal people that sometimes get lost in the estimates and many differences. Can you state the theorem before? Yes, 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 is not no 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 we will do a gap so it's, it doesn't pass through a double norm. Ah, you don't. It's not a double norm. No, it's not a double norm. No, because we want to get a gap. We want a norm. Yes, yes, yes. So. Let one one. So for every constant a rather than one, there exists a constant c with the minus one on a, such that for every n at zero, for every p larger than zero, for every g from p one to r, we have. The norm of B minus N happens suddenly in log B, it's less than C power P, A power PN, norm of B log P. Okay, this uh, lemma comes uh, as we, we say this one. If you have a good control of inverse branches, okay. You can prove this then. And what kind of G for any G? For every G. But for every G for which this one is finite. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it's something. Yes, it's for G log P. So this says that the iteration of this operator, the pull forward, okay, up to a small constant here, which is a, a bit of a smaller, okay, this operator here is essentially bound to the norm log P. Okay. We, for reference, we said before that in norm older, we could not do it. We have to lose a bit the norm the log. If we start here with C gamma, we had something like C gamma over A N. Okay. We had the loss here. Here it means that in log P, it's, it's a bit better. I mean, you have the you don't have the loss. Okay. F is any F is from P1 to P1. That's not a to the final map, let the F as no uh, periodic critical points. For simplicity, if this happens, if there are periodic critical points, this estimate stays true if I just A on Julia Z. Okay, so if I just wonder what happens on the Julia set, uh, I don't need the, the assumption here. But if I want to say what happens everywhere, I have to add the assumption here. Otherwise, uh, estimate diverge near critical period. For example, the exceptional set. Okay, so this is the, the assumption. Now, so the question, yes, was the A? Is, was, so the A to the power N, P times N. P times N, yes. Okay. Because there is, it means that the constant here, you fix for every P, I mean, the worse, the, the more you regular you ask, the more the constant here becomes bad, and a power p becomes bad. Such 
But once you fix P, this is the constant, and this is something that you can list. Uh, uh, this is the rate of loss that you have, which is worse and worse for every piece. Okay, so this comes uh, from the same idea before of estimating uh, the same branches. If I have two points uh, and I have x1, x3, y1, and uh, x2, y2, okay, if I know that the distance between uh, x i, y, y is at least, uh, is no more than distance x, y, power uh, uh, one over three, uh, m, you buy fm. Once you have something like this, you can get this one. Okay. And the idea is that now this exponent here, instead of going here in the exponent of the over there, goes here in front of the constant. Okay. The, the effect of the constant here in the in the, in the estimates, instead of going here, the exponent here. Now you have a log of r instead of r power gamma. Before it went to the gamma, now it's a log of r over gamma. If you want the gamma goes in front as a constant, so you find it here. So this is just the idea, okay? This one really once we have this estimated, I think this is really an exercise. So the theorem here, which is not obvious on the other hand, is the following. So this replace this one, okay? It means if I start with something here, log p, okay, if I do a series with the push forward of this one, I have something that replaces this one. After with the same p, okay. Now, the theorem here, this is theorem of the circle theorem. Again, I take f uh, a rational map uh, with this assumption, okay. Otherwise, every estimate I do, I will do this real set. Let's take this one. And suppose that, uh, so I have G from P1 to R, such that if I take DDC of G, okay, this is, this is the measure. I take uh, the mass as a positive plus negative part, uh, and this thing that is less than one, okay? Something like this. Then I assume that the integral of G nu is equal to zero, and I assume that the norm G log P is no more than one. Okay, this space here. Then for every eta, which is at least D minus P P plus one, there exists C, which is independent of G with this condition here, such that for every N, D minus N, F and G, F and star G, in order infinity is less than C eta power F. So this, uh, you can think of it uh, as a version of the exponential speed of convergence. Yes. Less than one, I see. Yes. But it's true for every theta, but it's not very interesting. <laughs> It's true for every theta, and it's not very interesting. But it's, I mean, for every theta, yes. No, for every, no, 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 for every. No, this is the point. I mean, this is the best rate you can get in some sense. So for all their functions, you have the speed of, you have the distribution speed, which is essential your speed one over d power gamma two, okay, which comes from interpolation. This one doesn't come from interpolation because you cannot interpolate uh, in a easy way log the function between C2 or this. Uh. So this really requires a proof. Uh. And this proof requires uh, a bit more of potential theory. But now, if, uh, if you have this one, okay, once you have the theorem and the lemma, this one, maybe I give the idea of the theorem. Once you have this one, If I have u, let's say that it is, uh, let's say, DDC of u, again, less than one, 
you log b less than one. If I do the series, uh, some alpha, let take alpha less than one. If I did a series, fn star of u over dn over no, k minus one, I don't put this one, this one is just less than one. This one is log two. This is one for every q up to log alpha, log d. It's not very important the contact, but just to say it's easy. So this plus one minus one, I forget, is just with some margin. Again, it's always because the estimate is almost something. Is essentially this one rate. So this is the loss that you have. You start with p, you have a loss of the degree, okay, and you have this one. So one. So, so this is essentially the rate that you have. Okay. So this is explicit loss. If I start with something which is log p and I push forward. Now, by the first one, it tells me that the norm log p is essentially constant, okay? Because once I have the series with alpha, I can take here, I apply with the a that is very close to one, essentially negligible. To estimate the first part of the series as we did before. And the second part of the series, I can use this term. Because again, for every theta which is uh, close to this one, but once I p, I, I, I can make this one a, a rate explicit, then I can do this one. Again, you have a series. You cut the series in two parts. You say, I want both of them bounded by the series up to n and the series at least n. Okay, let's call this one u. So you have the oscillation of u r is the oscillation up to r of this first part. Yes. In the the outcome is, is it log q continuous? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. So I take the series, I cut into parts, I estimate all the terms like this. Here I use the norm infinity by the theorem. Okay. And by the theorem, I get that this is less than something like one over log r power something that depends on this n. Okay. This one, I can use the fact that instead of the older, I use the log p. It's weaker, but I'm estimating a weaker not. So this one is also less than something one log r, something that depends on n and all the constants. Okay. Up to taking the good n here, you can see that this one that you can get here, both of them you can make on this order. But the real point here is that it's the same proof as before. Once you have these estimates here, once you have this one that replaces the older one, okay, and you get the same here. And uh, the one in norm infinity here. Okay. Precisely. Yeah, what you do. Here you have n. You will take n of the form p plus one over log d log. Log n. Well, plus one. One one two estimates. And now you know that M of U R is a, is no more. Now the first one, which is the worst one, is alpha n d n. Because this one is I don't put the d, eh? so here I have to put the, the estimate d n. A the n log r plus one minus p. So this is what I get from the first part. Okay, is the worst term of the series using the lemma. Okay, if I estimate it one up to n. The second part I use the norm infinity, and this is alpha d. Eta that I can choose with, with the constraints there. Power. Okay. 
Now, if I take this n here, put inside, I take data with that condition there. You can trust me, you simplify all the terms and you get precisely this one. That both of them are of order log two. I don't know if you want this computation, but it's there. There, there is a Q there. You can do it. Okay, so both these terms, uh, in some sense, what you are doing is you're taking these two, and now you say, I take, I want them equal. So I find N for, so for these, these two estimates are equal. I find that the optimal N is this one. And now with this N, I said, okay, now I check, for example, with this N, I plug inside here. What is this rate now? Ah, it's become a log, log N. Okay. So here I use the lemma, here I use the theorem. Now, let me give the idea of the theorem then. Here, this is an idea of potential theory that I didn't uh, touch too much before. Theorem this one. That is the idea. Okay. How to do exponential speed for 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 functions that are very weak, which are not many older. Okay. Yes. Yes. This one. I just said. Okay. Once you get this two, you can do the exercises. Is is that estimate? How to do this one? So let me write for simplicity G N. Which is a b minus n f x star. Okay. Now, we are not convinced even by the definition. <laughs> okay. So now it's uh, the point. The fact that I have this. Uh, now, the, what I'm going to use uh, is a tool. Uh, so the fact that I have this condition here, so by a I can just go up. There exists a, a constant T zero positive, independent of the and n, such that the integral of the one. Of e, bn, gn is less than gn. Now, if you think of gn, so gn is defined in this way, bn is just this one, okay? this part is just this one. Okay? So, Dave Laplatan always have this estimate because we know that S star preserves the mass, okay? So, you have a family of function whose Laplace is always uniformly bounded in some sense in this norm. Okay? It's an estimate about superharmonic functions now that uh, there is a uniform integrability constant. Now, this is a much refined version of the, of the fact that superharmonic functions are always L1 or always LP for all P. This comes from the fact that actually the exponential of them is integrable, which, is, which gives all the integrability together. And this says if I have a uniform estimate like this, uh, it's actually uniform in all the functions that I have. Okay, so this is the tool that we are going to use. Very good, very good. This is what I wanted to pass in this course. There must be we back to the measure. The bag, yes. What is the name of it? Is it called Coda? S K O D I. It's a theorem in the 70s. I mean it's really it's a classical now theorem. It's one of the ways to prove that supermonic functions are integrable uh, or are LP in all the P. For example, because once uh, this is true, you can take a superharmonic function here. You can develop this exponentially. Gives that all the power are integrable in particular. It's a quick proof to say that all power of uh, the LP for all P. It's a strong property of superharmonic functions. Now, how do we use this one? Now, 
Here, I want to keep the statement. Fix a constant A, than one, such that eta is larger than A over B, E plus one. Okay, I know that I will try to get this speed here in the result. Then I have it for every eta satisfying this. Okay, so this is the speed that, that, that I try to get. Suppose my contradiction. That for infinitely many n, there exists a n in B1 such that the n of a n in modulus is larger than three eta n for some j. Okay, suppose that they have a g for which it fails, it's more than this. Okay. And it means that if, but if I can prove a contradiction, it means that I can be this one actually. Okay, let's assume this. I'll choose an error, which is E and let me write in this way C A A power N over B. Power n eta minus n over n. Now, this CA, I write it here. Oh, here is the lemma, but it's where the one of the lemma. It was like this dilemma. This one, let me call CA for, uh, for simplicity because we want to know how it depends on A. So, this is the constant, okay? It's this constant here. Let's take this one. Now, by this lemma, I want to estimate what happens in a ball of radius a n and radius r now. I can control the oscillation thanks to this one. And the size is done in a way that will get a, a, good, a, good, a good estimate. By the lemma, if the distance between z and a n is less than r n, OK? What I have? I have a GN of Z. The lemma is true for all GF. For, uh, so it's uh, I, in, in particular, I write this one. This is at least GN of AN minus GN of AN minus GN of Z. Okay? This is just this. There is no lemma for now. Now, this is at least 3 eta N. This is the oscillation I can use the non block. This is my CPA, APN, one plus log R minus B. Now, by the definition that I choose here, you can believe that it was chosen correctly in order to make this one work. This is at least eta over n. R here has been chosen so that you take the log, you get all this part here. You see, you have the minus, so it's precisely to simplify the A and P. It's precisely to get this one up to when you put the power P. And this one is there to simplify the constants. Okay, so this one is true. So I know that on the ball of radius Rn, my function satisfies this one, independent on n. Okay, for all n. For the whole iterate, I have this one uniform on a ball. Now what I want to do, I want to use this uniform, this ball, even if it shrinks, I have this estimate. I want to say that I contradict this estimate here. How do I use this one? This implies that C0 is larger than the integral on P1 of P and Gn. Let me not write the bag, okay? Let me not use my, my own conventions, or <laughs> let me simplify not write the bag, which is at least on the ball INR of DDN GN. I just integrate on the ball. 
This is at least up to some constant. What? It is at least the radius power two, Rn power two, the radius, times the value. And the value we know that is at least E, the n, eta times two. Because the value is at least this one. This one is at least, again, you use the definition of Rn. This is at least E power minus two Ca. Rn is this one, is the radius of n, is the component. This is the Rn, the star. Uh, Rn, yes, it could be R. It's uh, Rn, yes, to make it depend on R, on N. So this one is the radius, tac tac. So this one, Ca, An, I put the radius, okay. Eta, so this is just uh, R square, okay. So I just did one for now. This part, but then I use also this part. Eta n over p, okay, plus the n time. Okay, this part comes from r square. This one is the other one. Now, if eta does not satisfy, the, I mean, satisfies this one. Now, eta is in the in this condition here. We choose the constant actually. This one, the a, we have this condition here. This part is diverging. I mean, in total, this part here is diverging. This one is going to infinity. Okay, so this one goes to infinity by the choice of uh, of uh, eta and whatever, and so this one is contradiction. Okay, so this gives uh, a proof uh, not of rate one over this, but of rate uh, less. I mean, that, I mean, if p goes to infinity, you get uh, well, essentially one over d. So you recover the expected one. You cannot hope to have better, okay? But with p less less than something, it's it's it's, it's something depending on p. But you recover the equidistribution for all functions which are log p, but satisfies this condition, okay? It's not only for log p. You satisfy this condition. You satisfy this one. So you have the speed of redistribution exponential for functions which are log p, but also satisfy this one. This is another indication that now when we want to build the norm, we cannot use only the log p. We want to use log p and also something on the mass here, because we only want to work for, for now for something satisfies this. And now we already know that this norm in some sense had a gap. It was not very regular, but it had a gap. So now if we build the norm with this plus this one, this part has a gap in some sense. This part at least has good control. It's not a gap, it's just bounded, but at least we have a space that more or less is bounded. Okay, so these are the technical points now to start with five. I don't know how, I don't know how, maybe, maybe, I don't know if it's stopped. What's that? No, what time it is? What's that? What's 11? Who's the chairman? Oh, you can, can stop here and do five different from zero on Monday. So. Okay. So, the regularity of G in G and two, so. Regularity, but it's log P continuous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Uh, but the DDC, yes. Uh, yeah. The DDC is, uh, I mean, it's bounded in one. So it's just continuous. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I mean, so this does not imply this one. Eh? This does, in the same way that even older does not imply this one. This essentially says the, the non DSH that I said, yes, is bounded. This says. Uh, in practice, this says it's the difference of two subharmonic functions, okay, for which you can control the mass with good estimate. And this says it's, it's log p continuous. But a priori, this one does not imply that this one. It can be arbitrary irregular. I mean, you're doing two derivatives and you are asking now it's bounded uh, as a measure. So it's uh, no, 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 this is quite strong and this is a real regular. So it's uh, they're independent, they're independent. I mean, even older does not imply this one. I mean, of course, C2 implies this one. 
but even C1 does not imply this. It's not enough for this one. It's, uh, so all that does not imply this, and this does not even imply continuous. This can be discontinuous uh, everywhere. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, this does not even imply continuous. So they are really unrelated. It's, uh, Uh, 